Hi there. My name is Aaron Landerman. I'm a professor of electrical and computer engineering at Georgia Tech, and we've looked at a lot of simple transistor circuits in EC3400 analog electronics. And in this lecture, I would like to take a look at how you could put a bunch of these simple circuits together to make a complicated circuit like an operational amplifier. In particular, we'll look at the TL071, and you could also apply what I'm going to say to the TL072, which is the dual version, and the TL074, which is the quad version. The TL07X series is something of a workhorse op amp for synthesizer applications. The earliest operational amplifiers actually used vacuum tubes, because that was the only technology available at the time. Now, all operational amplifiers have a differential input stage, as you can see here. Here's the negative input going to one grid, and here's the positive input going to the other grid. Op amps like the 741 and the much better 5534 shown here that is used in SSL mixing consoles have BJT differential input stages. The TL07X series, on the other hand, uses JFETs in its differential input stage. Now, I haven't really talked about JFETs. They're kind of cool, but they're less well known, I think, nowadays than their MOSFET cousins. But don't worry about the details here. The main thing to note is that JFETs are going to give you much higher input impedance than BJTs would. Schematic here is using a convention where the gate lead is drawn as being closer to the source lead than the drain lead. You'll see other people draw the gate lead in the middle. And in any case, what we're calling the source and the drain is really a matter of how it's being used in the circuit. The JFET is really symmetric across the channel, unlike BJTs. The arrow pointing out indicates that this is a P-channel type device. The arrow direction here corresponds to an indication of the direction of a PN junction and not the direction of current flow. You can assume that no current is flowing through the gate. Since this is a P-channel setup here, the bias current is being fed in through the top here. And down here, we see that there's a current mirror. So this is a differential pair with a current mirror load. So this entire structure here can be thought of as a primitive operational transconductance amplifier, but unlike in a synthesizer application where you would have some sort of resistance that's specifically designed to turn the current to a voltage in a controlled way, essentially the impedance seen looking into the collector of the current mirror, that's what's acting as the load resistance, and that's going to be pretty high. So this is going to have a whole lot of voltage gain. This three transistor current mirror is something we looked at in a previous lecture where we called it a current mirror with base current compensation. Notice these emitter resistors here that improve the output impedance of the current mirror. Okay, that's the input. Let's talk about the output. Here we have a complementary common collector push-pull output stage. Notice we also have this 128 ohm resistance at the output, and this is basically short circuit output protection, so you don't blow up the amplifier if you do something naughty with it. And here we have a VBE multiplier. Now the VBE multiplier we looked at in a previous lecture consisted of a BJT and two resistors. Here we have a VBE multiplier consisting of a BJT, a resistor, and a diode, although that diode is manifest as a BJT with its collector and base hooked together. If I look at the bases of the complementary pair at the output, I see that we have basically one diode drop here and one diode drop here. So the bases of these transistors on the right here are basically held two diode drops apart as far as the biasing goes. Before I actually start doing some signal tracing, let's talk about what's going on here. This diode is biased backwards in normal operation, and it only comes into play if something's going wacky. I don't really have a better sense than that as to what it's doing. If you do, please leave a comment below. So I'm going to treat this diode as if it wasn't there. 
I'm also going to treat this capacitor as an open circuit for now. I'll come back to it later. Oh, and we should also talk about the current sources. So in a way, you could say that there's a current source here that's feeding the bottom of the differential pair. And you could say that there's a current source here that's feeding the top of this bit with the VBE multiplier and the push-pull output stage. But these two current sources are really the outputs of current mirrors. And that current mirror is being driven by a current source down here. I guess you could call it a current sink. So there's a current being generated here. And the base of this BJT is being set by this Zener diode. So if we assume that there's negligible current flowing through the base, you could say that the voltage across the resistor here is the same as the voltage across this Zener diode minus this VBE junction here. Now, this whole setup here is like some of the current sources we looked at previously, except in those previous examples, we had a resistor here, and that resistor is responsible for setting the current going through the Zener diode. The problem with using a resistor here would be that the current flowing through the Zener, and hence the exact voltage set by the Zener, would change as the voltages at the power supply pins change. And you want this to be able to work off plus minus 15 volts or plus minus 12 volts or zero volts and 12 volts or zero volts and nine volts or zero volts and five volts or something weird like minus five volts and five volts. Anyway, you would like that current through the Zener to be invariant with respect to changes at the power supply within, of course, a reasonable range. So instead of using a resistor here, the designers of the TL071 use a JFET with the gate hooked to the source. So this JFET itself is acting as a constant current source, which essentially turns on the Zener and allows this current source to do its work. And it generates that current over a wide range of power supply voltages. Now you're able to get a current out of the JFET with the gate source voltage being equal to zero because JFETs are inherently depletion mode devices. You could also use a depletion mode MOSFET here. MOSFETs come in both enhancement mode and depletion mode, although enhancement mode MOSFETs are probably better well known, whereas JFETs only come in depletion mode. If you tried to use an enhancement mode MOSFET here, this wouldn't work because having the gate source voltage be zero would give you zero current out, similarly with a BJT. And so the transistors up here form a current mirror with one input and two outputs. I think that's something I meant to talk about when we talked about current mirrors, but I forgot to talk about it, which is that you can have the input side of the current mirror, and you can have as many outputs as you want by just cloning the transistors at the output. So there's a current being created here, and that's input here. And if you take this transistor here and flip it around left to right, then you'll see that matches the two transistor current mirror that we talked about previously, with this being the current output that's feeding the structure with the VBE multiplier and the push-pull output stage. Now there's a second output to the current mirror and that's over here and it's driving the differential pair. But notice there's a resistor here, but there's not a resistor over here and there's not a resistor at the other output here. Now we've talked about putting resistors at the emitters of BJTs and current mirrors before in order to improve output impedance. But here there's something else going on because we have the resistor here, but there's not a resistor over here. Now think about the effect that you would get if you increase this resistance to infinity. Well, then you wouldn't get any output at all. Basically what this resistor is letting us do is it's letting us have this current output be of lesser magnitude than this current output here. So the current output here matches the current here, but the current over here is going to be lower. If you go to Marshall Leach's EC3050 website, remember 3050 is an earlier number for what's now called EC3400, 
and scroll down a little bit, we can find his notes on the BJT current mirror. And if we scroll down a little bit, we can see the basic two transistor mirror. And we can scroll down a little bit more and we can find a version of the current mirror that he calls the BJT low level mirror. And he goes through the analysis of what happens when you put one of these resistors in. Okay, with all of that in mind, let's trace a small signal through the circuit from an input to an output. So let me imagine that we ground in minus and we want the voltage at N plus to go up. So if we force the voltage at the gate here to go up, this is acting as a common source amplifier and I wind up with the voltage at the drain going down. So I can sort of trace the signal through this direction. Again, I'm going to assume that the diode and the capacitor are open. We'll come back to the question of the capacitor a little bit later. I trace it going this direction. And when you're signal tracing like this, bases can be inputs but not outputs, and collectors can be outputs but not inputs. So I can't go down into the collector. I have to go into the base here. And I see that this transistor here is acting kind of like a voltage buffer. It's a common collector amplifier. All right, so I go through here and let's see if the voltage is going down at the base here. That means it's also going down here. That's not inverting. So I can trace it through here. And now this transistor here is a common emitter amplifier. So if it goes down at the base, then the voltage is going to go up at the collector. So let's see, it's going up this direction here. And let's see, if I go over this direction, then this is a common collector amplifier. And so tracing through this way, we have an up arrow here. So we have an up arrow here. Now this VBE multiplier, this is designed to have a DC difference of two diode drops. And let's see, this BJT right here, you can think about that, I suppose, as acting as a common base amplifier, kind of. So if the voltage is going up here, the voltage is also going up here. And this is common collector, so that's making the voltage go up here. So my description of what was happening on that particular path was a little loose. There's probably people watching this who know more about op amp design than I do. If you're one of those people and you have a better interpretation of what's going on here, please leave a comment below. Now there is another path. So if we make the voltage go up here at the positive input, we can also think about this as acting as a common drain amplifier, in which case it's kind of acting voltage bufferish, but I wouldn't really want to think about it that way here. But anyway, if the arrow goes up here, there's also a voltage arrow that goes up here. And then the JFET on the left here is acting in a common gate mode. And so that kind of makes an arrow go up here. And let's see if we trace the path through like that through here. Well, I can't go into the collector because that's an output. I can only go into the base. All right, so I'm gonna go down through this particular path here. And let's see that then is acting like a common collector amplifier. So the arrow going up here makes an arrow go up here. And now then this is acting as a common emitter amplifier. And the arrow going up here corresponds to an arrow going down here, which very importantly matches the arrow going down here. So this is all working consistently. Okay, so what about this capacitor here? What's going on there? Notice that the arrow on the right side of the cap is going up and the arrow on the left side of the cap is going down. Essentially what happens is at higher frequencies, this capacitor is acting more like a short. So some of the signal here on the right side of the cap is being fed back. And because these arrows are going opposite directions, you get a negative feedback effect, and that lowers the amplifier response at high frequencies, which helps the amplifier stay stable. Now, there's also a feed forward path that's essentially going backward through that feedback loop, but notice that there's a gain stage here, 
So the feedback is going to be a lot more powerful than the reverse path through that feedback loop. Ooh, that was a lot of stuff. Okay, what haven't we talked about yet? Let's see, one thing we haven't talked about are the offset pins. Now, if you put the same signal into the negative input and the positive input, you should, in theory, get zero volts out. But in real life, you'll get a small DC offset in practice. And what you can do is you can hook some stuff to the offset pins in order to try to deliberately unbalance this current mirror a little bit to compensate for that effect and zero it out. So those offset trim pins are really only available on the TL071, the single version. You can't get them on the 72 dual version or the 74 quad version because there's just not enough pins on the package. And once you consider the cost of a trim pot, and in particular paying someone with a small screwdriver to sit there and adjust that trim pot while looking at an oscilloscope screen, you might as well just buy a better op amp. So I generally recommend you try to go for designs that avoid using these offset pins, unless you really can't avoid it.